Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. I first want to begin this message with a scripture for you to ponder. In 2 Corinthians 6.16, 6, it says, What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Is God your God? Does he live with you? Does he walk with you? Is he with you? He will be with his people. He didn't say everybody. He said, my people. So that right there tells us that in order for us to keep talking and walking and doing what we're supposed to be doing according to the will of God, well, we must continue to acknowledge him, trust in him, love him as such. And so let us talk about this particular message, one that is not going to, once again, rub people the right way. This one is about coveting. Some of you all right away said, oh, I already know about that. I know I'm not supposed to do it. End of discussion. Well, it's not so simple because if you think about the last time when you saw somebody's house, you said maybe something like, oh, I wish I had. Or the last time when you saw somebody's garments they were wearing. Ooh, I wish I had something like that. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Lord Jesus, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. But so many people want what their neighbor has. Some people have even fought others to get the neighbor's house. To live in the neighborhood with People that God did not call you to be in the neighborhood with. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Some of you all are saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There was a time where people were literally giving their lives just to be in certain neighborhoods. There was people that were doing all sorts of things just to get what other people had. You mean to tell me they did all that in vain? No, they didn't do it all in vain. I mean, you know, equal rights is equal rights. But God wants some of you all to know that during these times of protests where people wanted what the other man had, not everybody was going after it because of equal rights. Some folks were simply going after it because they thought that what man had was better. They thought what woman was doing was better. But that's not what God had called some people to do. Not everybody was supposed to be going in this neighborhood. Not everybody was supposed to be shopping at this store. You know, not everybody was supposed to be, uh-oh, intermingling with certain folks who are idol worshipers, who have a long history of doing some terrible things or messing around with folks who got generational curses. Oh, the Lord was showing a lot of folks during these protests and even now. That what you're going after, what you want so bad, isn't necessarily what I want you to have. Exodus 20, 17 says, you shall not covet, covet your neighbor's house. You shall not. There is no analyzing that needs to be done. The next scripture, Deuteronomy 5, 21. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Oh, Lord. Once again, how many times have men been in the presence of their friends looked at the wives and said, oh, we, if only she was mine. Maybe he didn't say it out loud because he would be a little bit foolish to do it, especially with an angry man who would not hesitate to hit him in the mouth. But he was thinking and his eyes were saying it and his hands possibly looked like they were going to do it. And that's why some men don't allow their friends around their wives because they know them and they know how much they covet house, car, women, Lord Jesus. But the scriptures, Deuteronomy 5, 21 said, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And yet so many men and women, even women, 
Did I just go there? Yeah, well, we got lesbians getting married to one another, but it's not good enough. She wants to go out there and she wants to mess around and do some things she's not supposed to. Oh, but I'm not going to tread too deeply in that territory because I am talking to the people of God and those that want to live righteously and want to follow his precepts. But you get my point. We shouldn't be going after other people's partners. Now, Micah 2.2 2 said, They covet fields and seize them and houses and take them. Okay? Now, what exactly was going on? Well, let's go and back a little bit. There was some things that was taking place in Micah. And God was not pleased. Matter of fact, there was warnings that took place. If we begin in Micah 2, chapter or verse 1, it says, Woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on their beds. Okay, right away, God is warning some folks about some things they're up to. Then, reading on, it says, At morning's light, they carry it out. Because it is in their power to do it. They covet fields and seize them and houses and take them. They defraud people of their homes. They rob them of their inheritance. And I'm hearing in the spirit, the elitists are doing just that. They have made things in such a way where people cannot afford their own properties. So it pushes them to have to do what? Sell it, give it up. Because why? They covet. They want it. So many have gone after fields of land and they still are. This will be great for a building, an office building. This will be great for a housing complex. Okay, so what do we need to do in order to get that? Okay, so they figure out ways. And folks that were promised that oh this property is going to be yours one day or you know we're leaving this for you somehow some type of paperwork comes about and the next thing you know people are defrauded out of their inheritance Lord Jesus and those that are currently living in their homes oh some little fluky thing happens and the next thing you know you're not living in your home anymore Oh, you see, when the enemy wants something, he's going to put up demonic spirits to seize it, to get it. When the enemy wants to plant his feet somewhere, he's going to figure out ways to move those people out so that his minions can come in. You see, light is not supposed to be with darkness and so some of you all have been moved up out of corporations and organizations and so forth, not because your work ethic was terrible, not because, you know, you're a bad person, even though the enemy tries to make it seem like you did something wrong. Sometimes it's just a plan, a plan that was put in motion a long time ago to systematically get you being light. Some folks don't understand why they don't like you. But they figure out this way to get you out. You're not going to be a part of the club. It's not that you're a bad person. It's not that you got a poor work ethic. It's just something about you. But they're not going to tell you that. Instead, they got a nitpick. They got to come up with something. Or they may even go so far as to just blatantly lie about some things. So that you will say, I resign. Or I no longer want to be a part of this group. And all the while, you have been manipulated. You have been manipulated so that they could get what they wanted, which was ultimately to get you out because you speak too much truth. Some of you all, you just got too much going on with you. You're a threat to the establishment. Oh, you know about that king, that king that wanted all the firstborn not to be born because he feared his replacement. Some of you all, you are a threat. You are a threat. And so I got to get what I want. I got to covet, right? I'm doing something to get something done to ultimately get my way. Lord Jesus. Some of you all know you've been in these situations for far too long. For far too long. And you keep getting caught up in them. 
because for some you you covet yourself and covet covetous covetousness tends to attract folks that are very much like you you know you tend to be around individuals who they want just like you do and they don't mind cutting your throat to get what they want that's a spirit that needs to be broken in Romans 13 9 the commandments you shall not commit adultery you shall not murder you shall not steal and you shall not covet Lord Jesus you shall not covet please stop listening to these folks who try to justify that wanting other people's items and their you know partners and wanting other just wanting things in general that God has not called them quit justifying and saying that it's okay to be that way because it's not I know sometimes we we all get tempted to want to you know reason that it's okay to want you know what somebody has and so you you know say it out loud and all you're doing is inviting that spirit of covetousness to come around and now you're attracting a bunch of folks that saying well what about you I mean, you're so lucky. You got this. You got that. Don't receive that. No, it's not luck. I got issues just like everybody else. Ooh, your man is fine. He's all that. I wish he could be mine. Ooh, whoa. Now that's a woman you don't want around in your camp. Ooh, look at all of what you all have. Wow, I wish I had all this stuff. Oh, you mind giving me that piece of jewelry? Or what about that that your mom just bought you? Oh, I like that. I mean, you know, you could always get another one. You don't want that person coming back to your home. They're already letting you know that they covet. And they enjoy coveting it. Coveting. And they don't mind boldly telling you that I want what you got. Deuteronomy 7.25 Do not covet uh oh, the silver and gold on them, and do not take it for yourselves, or you will be ensnared by it. Some people are wanting what other people have, and then went to God because they believe that God is going to bless them because they feel like their request, their petition was, you know, fair. It was great. It was wonderful. God wouldn't go against it, right? Mm. Have you gotten it yet? Have you gotten those answers to prayer yet? Wanting silver and gold, wanting the latest toy, the latest trinket. And God's saying no. And there's all sorts of difficulty that's been taking place. And you say, oh, it's the devil. No, look around you. Is what you are going after going to break the bank? Is what you are going after causing much upset in the household? Are your motives wrong? Is your stubborn ways, your insist, your insisting to get what you want when you want it, is that causing all sorts of upheaval? I do recall that God is not going to allow us to get what we want, you know, in, in ways that will cause all sorts of dissension in the household. I mean, he's the one that showed us in the scriptures, right? That a house divided against itself would fall. So um, why would we want to do something to destroy, destroy our home, our relationships? Oh, that's right. Isn't there an enemy? Isn't there an enemy that does things to cause us to work for him at times? By keeping up all sorts of drama, by doing things that we know is going to be a problem for people in the household. Oh, yeah, that's right. There is an enemy that does that. And isn't one of his, um, one of his, uh, his tactics is to destroy? Mm hmm. Lord Jesus. Some of you all think twice about what you're asking for. And sometimes God will let it happen. He'll let it happen. You'll say when after the storm, you know, is over and the smoke is clear, you'll say, why, why God, did you let me go through this? Oh, because there was a lesson to be learned. 
you wanted to you didn't want to go the easy route and just say okay god i respect you i know that what you're saying is right nope you insisted on having your way and so now there's a firestorm so don't blame me blame yourself <laughs> lord jesus lord jesus some of you all please just stop going to the lord wanting what other people got <sighs> Okay, James 4, 2. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, right? So you quarrel and fight. And then it even mentions murder. You covet and cannot obtain. So you fight and quarrel. Lord Jesus, some of you all, that's just what you do. Most of the time when you're arguing, it's not over the shoe or the car or the uh bad thing somebody did or the you know stupid thing that uh you know this one or that one said to you or you argued be over somebody's toothbrush or you argued over somebody doing the dishes or it was something crazy a pen okay no the real meat of the matter is is that you argued because you didn't get what you wanted. That's what it was. That's what it was. That's what it boiled down to. And then the other person argued back because he or she wanted to keep. Wanted to keep what they got. So one is defending. One is offending. And then the God that I serve, he's one that's about peace. So he knows how to separate folk. He knows how to, you know, set up situations where... Oh, we're going to end this quickly, especially if you are definitely one who is sold out for God. He's going to flip the whole situation around to the point where even man will say, what? I don't get this. How in the world did it happen like this? Or woman will say, I mean, it was just a pin or it was just a shoe or it was just a, you know, situation about some dishes in the kitchen. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, nope. it was a lot more than that. There's a covetous spirit in the atmosphere. One that is always, always tapping you on the shoulder to get you to do what you want. To get you to get the things that go outside of the will of God or things that you shouldn't be getting right now. God said you're going to get them, but not right now. But you made things happen sooner rather than later. And now you're complaining because you don't have enough money. You don't have enough time. You, you know, are upset because the wife is upset about it or the husband's upset about it or the kids are saying it's too noisy or it's too big. or it's, And God said that if you would have just waited, I was giving you something that would be able to accommodate but now you're going to suffer lord jesus you're going to suffer how many people wanted a man or wanted a woman so bad that you spent so much money so much time then when you finally got that opportunity to be with them you realize why god told you uh-uh this isn't it this isn't right this is not the one lord jesus lord jesus we reap what we sow in this world uh, Romans 7, 8, where it says, Thou shalt not covet, and the sin, having received an opportunity through the command. Okay, now let's let's hang out in Romans 7, 8 for a little while. I'm going to give you an opportunity to bring it up on your screen or to look it up in your Bible. And then this will close today's study out. And there's a lot of good information. I'm telling you, I love the Bible because it helps us get through a lot of these emotions within that we have, you know, because wanting what other people have, there's also that jealousy. You know, I remember one of my kids talked about feeling jealous about something, you know, he, he experienced these feelings within that rose up within him and he didn't like that feeling. And it boiled down to somebody getting something that he didn't get, you see. So you want something and then when you don't get it and then somebody else gets it. Now, you know, you're not only dealing with the covet, the, the, the covetousness, but you're also dealing with the jealousy that comes with it. And then, of course, anger, because eventually you're going to keep pondering on it and then you're going to become angry. And then once you get past the anger, then you start 
you know, becoming sad or depressed about it. And then you just find yourself falling further and further away from the Lord. You stop reading the Bible like you used to. You stop, um, you know, going to the church. I remember this one lady, she was very upset because her, her mother had passed away. And so she decided that she was going to say out loud about how she wished everybody else's mother would pass. That's wrong. That's wrong. Okay. So because she wanted her mother to live longer. She wanted her mother to live longer and because she didn't get what she wanted. Right. Other people's mothers are living longer. So therefore, she put out a curse. Oh, but you know, the God that we serve. He's a righteous God. He's a loving God. And he protects. He protects his people. So when she put out the curse, needless to say, <laughs> nothing happened. So uh, <laughs> when people eventually did die, they had died because of, you know, natural issues. Not because she put out a curse. But some people who don't get what they want will put out curses in the atmosphere. Oh, I didn't get the money that I should have been paid. So therefore, no good is going to happen. Okay, but then it turns out that that curse that you put out there when you really need God to work on your behalf and you really want a situation to work for your benefit, the very curse that you put out, <laughs> things have a way of happening where it blocks you from your blessing. The very one that could have been used to bless you because of the negative things that you spoke out into the atmosphere. Just when you are like, oh, answer the prayer. And yes, God is going to do it for me and all this. God says, oh, no. Remember what you said about this person? And so he redirects the blessing to someone else. Now, for some individuals, they're back into that state of mind of coveting again. I wanted this for 15 years. Now I got to wait another, what, 15 years for this to happen. Because you got upset because things didn't work when you wanted it. You were upset because you didn't get what you wanted when you wanted it. And then you threw out the curse in the atmosphere. And so the enemy said, oh, okay, okay, I'm at work again. You see, Lord Jesus, and it's undoubtable, shingas. Lord, some people are not paying close attention. They're not paying close attention at all to what God is trying to do in their life. And so therefore, they end up missing because they're too busy wanting to focus on everything else but what God is saying. Okay, so uh, let's get into Romans 7. Yeah. And we're talking about the law and sin. What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. Did you catch that? I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was, uh-oh, if the law had not said, you shall not covet. You see, on the inside, some of you all was like, what is this that I'm feeling? Oh, I don't understand. But then when the law came about, he got to use that law, you know, to talk to you in your life. You say, oh, now I get what it is that I've been going through is this desire to want what other people got. From website pages to, you know, getting married. And some folks just want, want, want everything. So anyway, but, but now you know, you know that what you've been experiencing for some of you all is, is just that. It's a spirit of, of coveting or covetousness. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said you shall not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Once I was alive, apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me. Yep, that's what sin does, doesn't it? It makes you think that you are, you know, going to be blessed and highly favored and wonderful things are going to happen. How many times have we bought stuff and... You know, all all those promises that they told us. And then when we got it, it ended up being a mess. And then you say to yourself, all these years I was wanting this thing. Lord Jesus. For sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment deceived me and through the commandment put me to death. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. You know, you, you within that old nature, it needs to be put to death. 
this is an old spirit. This is nine times out of ten for some. It's a generational thing going on where mama was covetous. Uh, daddy was, you know, wanting what other people had. And, you know, then the grandparents was like that. They seized property. They did devious things, you know, to different folks. Lord Jesus. Let's take the time out right now to pray. And just so you know, that speaker was Paul. Because I know sometimes it'll just slip up on us about eyes and minds and things like that and who's saying what and please do continue to read because it gets down into um we know that the law is spiritual but i'm unspiritual sold as a slave to sin more talk about sin it's it's very important that when you're looking at the scriptures you also want to see where you're going wrong and where you need to be redirected and then you take the time out to do what we're about to do, and that is pray. I pray in Jesus' name for the listener who is battling with the sin of wanting what other people have, also known as being covetous. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will just strengthen this person and cause them not to be tempted to want to spend up their money or go places just because somebody else did it. I pray in Jesus name that you will just turn every situation around Lord that they have gotten themselves in where they were being covetous. I pray in Jesus name Lord that you will continue to remind them that thou shalt not covet and that they should just wait on you in Jesus name. Wait on you. I pray Lord Jesus that if there's any unresolved issues that they're battling with as it relates to covetousness I pray in Jesus name that you will bring peace of mind to them and that they will do what they're supposed to do to make wrongs right. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for using me, a mere vessel, to communicate such a powerful message. And I pray in Jesus' name that the listener will be delivered as a result. Thank you so much, as always, for listening. And to God be the glory.